أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مذاكرة بي شيخ محمد فوزي الكركري قدس الله سره Divine Light in the Authentic Hadith In the spiritual journey within the tariqa and among the adherents of the path the initial step for a disciple involves a solemn pledge of allegiance the bay'a This commitment is preceded by a period of preparation where the individual is invited to engage in the litany known as Wird Tabarruk for a duration of 40 days. Additionally, the disciple is encouraged to perform the consultation prayer, Salat Istikhara. The purpose behind these practices is to foster self-assurance and introspection. The significance of this preparatory phase lies in its ability to reveal any inherent shortcomings. Should the disciple find themselves unable to adhere to the litany, it becomes evident that they are not yet ready to pledge their allegiance. This period serves as a litmus test for the disciples' intentions, ensuring that their commitment is driven by a genuine desire to seek divine illumination rather than by transient worldly needs. Upon successfully completing the 40-day litany and engaging in sincere prayer for guidance, the disciple often experiences a profound transformation. Revelations, along with auspicious signs, affirm their path of enlightenment. This newfound certainty, faith, and conviction in the spiritual journey mark a significant milestone. Following this period of deep reflection and confirmation, the disciple formally pledges their allegiance. It is then that they are graced with Nur Allah, the light of Allah, something that remains elusive and misunderstood by many, frequently dismissed as mere illusion or nefarious satanic deceit. SubhanAllah, indeed, there is no scripture that asserts shaitan originates from Nur. On the contrary, Allah has invariably associated Satan with darkness. The Qur'an states, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ يَخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ And as for those who disbelieve, their guardians are devils who take them out of the light into the darkness. Al-Baqarah 257 This clearly signifies that the shaitan's essence and nature are entrenched in darkness, pulling the beings of light towards the shadows. Conversely, the divine light is consistently affiliated with belief, righteousness, and divine guidance. The Creator, in His infinite wisdom and grace, is often described as the light of the heavens and the earth, Nur Samawati Wal Ard, illustrating a profound connection between light and divine presence. This extends to describe the believers, saints, prophets, and the righteous who are all likened to beacons of light, embodying guidance, truth, and purity. Thus, it is inconceivable to associate the sacred light with malevolence or deceit. The light witnessed by the believer is a manifestation of God's grace, a divine illumination guiding them in their path. Misattributing this light to shaitan is a grave mistake, distorting the very essence of divine revelation. You might say, I want an authentic hadith about this light of God. An authentic hadith is indeed found in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have made the following dua on his way to the mosque. O oh Allah, place light in my heart, light in my sight, and light in my hearing. Place light on my right, and place light on my left. Place light above me, and place light beneath me. Place light in front of me, and place light behind me, and make me light. This supplication highlights the profound yearning for the light of God in all aspects of being. It is therefore a grave misinterpretation to suggest that seeking divine light is akin to seeking the presence of Iblis. Such a notion starkly contradicts the essence of the Prophet's teachings and the very nature of divine illumination as taught in Islam. Reflect on the gravity of misattributing the attributes of light and darkness and consider the profound spiritual implications of such misunderstandings. When the Prophet departs from his home to the mosque, he prepares himself for prayer with this supplication. 
Throughout his journey to the mosque, he asks Allah to place light in his sight, symbolizing a prayer to make him see with the light of Allah. This reflects why the Prophet ﷺ emphasized, اتقوا فراسة المؤمن فإنه يرى بنور الله. Beware of the farasa or shrewdness of the believer, for he surely sees with the light of Allah. The Prophet's invocation extends beyond sight to encompass all senses and aspects. To be surrounded by light, whether turning to the right or to the left, thereby embodying light from every direction, the front, the back, above, and below. It is as though he's asking to be enveloped in light, untouched by any solid matter, transforming even his physical being, his hair, his skin, not to leave them as mere matter, but to turn them into light. Moreover, this supplication extends deeper, seeking transformation into light beyond the visible, into the skin, the unseen flesh beneath, aiming for every part of his being, including blood and bones, to be permeated with light, leaving no cell, atom, or molecule untouched by this divine luminosity. He then says, and make me light. وَجْعَلْنِي نُور And upon becoming light, he implores, وَعَظَّمْ لِي نُور O my Lord, intensify this light further. Seeking that his entire passage, every movement, every step, be bathed in divine light. One might ask, why does he desire this? The Prophet ﷺ elucidates, he desired this as he is on the verge of prayer, and prayer itself is light. Indeed, he affirms, as-salatu nur, prayer is light, wasiyamu diya, and fasting is a shining beacon of light, as authentically narrated in the hadith. So the Prophet himself supplicates Allah to endow his heart, his hearing, and all his faculties with light as he steps towards the mosque. Yet, there are those who claim that the light witnessed during the bay'ah is mere deception by shaitan. They rebuke this notion of seeing the light of God and attribute it to the shaitan. It is as though they attribute and use strength to Iblis despite the Almighty's supremacy. Allah says, إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Indeed, the plot of Satan has ever been weak. An-Nisa 76 And yet, they gave the shaitan strength to control the light of the Creator. If Iblis himself had perceived the divine light bestowed upon Adam السلام, he would have prostrated in awe. But Iblis, having been barred from such enlightenment, failed to prostrate. This signifies not only the prevention of Iblis from seeing the divine light, but also underscores the exalted status of the chosen servant created in the finest stature and imbued with divine light through which he comprehended his divine names and attributes, compelling the angels to prostrate before him. This individual in question is none other than Adam, our progenitor, chosen distinctively by the Creator to embody his light. Thus, the angels, the epitome of perfection, were commanded to bow in prostration not to any ordinary being, but to this human, the appointed vicergent of the Lord on earth. This act of prostration was not arbitrary. Upon Adam's presence, he was seen as a divine sign manifested as pure light. His skin, his hair, his eyes, his ears, and his feet radiated with this light, making him akin to an eternal sun, a divine direction, the Qibla of Allah on his earth. Rather than striving to dissipate the profound darkness enveloping their souls, a darkness so dense that extending a hand into it would barely make it visible, they reverse the very essence of their quest. Regrettably, by attributing light to Iblis, they inadvertently equate the divine with darkness, a grave misstep for those professing faith. Such utterances, uttered carelessly, may consign one to the deepest abysses of hell, enveloping in layers of unending darkness. Yet, the narrative does not end in despair, for there is redemption in the divine illumination that pervades all existence. 
By embracing the light of the Almighty, one transcends the tangible, dissolving all into nothingness, leaving only the presence of the Creator eternal and unchanging. In this spiritual awakening, everything transient fades, returning to its origins, while the Divine, in all His glory, endures. لِمَنُ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمْ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارِ To whom belongs the kingdom this day? To Allah, the One, the Subduer of All. Ghafir 16 This question echoes the divine assertion, recognizing Allah as the One, the Subduer, the embodiment of omnipotent light. When one experiences this revelation, all materiality seems to disintegrate, leaving behind only the eternal light of the Lord. In experiencing the essence of the verse, this realization is a profound self-affirmation, casting the divine truth upon one's own existence. Thus, while the truth of the verse remains constant, it is the individual who, upon this realization, finds themselves aligned with its profound message, living in harmony with its unchanging wisdom. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا He it is who created for you all that is on earth. Al-Baqarah 29 Yet, not all lay claim to it equally. The earth is destined for those awakened by Allah's light. مَنْ كَانَ مَيِّتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَا Those who were once lifeless and then revitalized. Al-An'am 122 Those who were once lifeless and then revitalized with the divine light. It is these righteous servants, not the faithless or the misguided, who are the true inheritors of the earth. They are the ones bathed in God's light, for whom the earth was expressively created. To claim this inheritance, one must liberate oneself from the shackles of darkness and embrace the radiant light of divine proximity and certainty. Remaining in the shadows equates to a forfeiture of one's right to exist within this grand design. Living in darkness, one might think they inhabit the universe, yet, in truth, they descend unwittingly into the deepest pits of despair. A life of true value is illuminated by the light, guiding one through the world and its inhabitants. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ And made for him light by which to walk among people. Al-An'am 122 Therefore, make yourself one of those who walk among people with the light and all shall align with you. Be with Allah and all things shall align in your favor. Be lillah and all things shall align in your favor. In the love of God and being beloved by God lies the key. Everything then gravitates towards you, serves you, for everything is created for you. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barikta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidu majid.